Hello. Uh, we are here to tell you a little bit about AI in, in innovation management. So what AI can do for innovation managers and what innovation managers can do for AI. So this is going to be a conversation between uh, an AI technologist uh, and a senior researcher in an innovation management and the future work. Um, anyway, we'll introduce ourselves now, I think. So my name is Galina Shubina and my background is in software engineering and data science. I spent uh, 10 years at Google and after that I spent five years now uh, where I either go into corporate work and help people build data and machine learning teams or I consult and help people figure out uh, their AI strategy, how to integrate machine learning into their organizations. And my partner here, uh, the young to my ying or the other way around is uh, Nina. Yeah, hello everyone, nice to see you all. Uh, so my name is Nina Bozic and as Galina said, I'm a, a senior researcher and practitioner in innovation management, but also uh, lately working a lot with issues around the future of, uh, of work at the RICE, um, so it's Research Institutes of Sweden. We're a big research institute all around the country. And um, what we want to do first, actually, want to start with a question before we go into this dialogue. So we'll ask to put up the question number one, because we're curious who is with us in this room. So the question is, what are you working with? Are you working with AI? Are you working with innovation management or something else? And what is that? So we can feel a little bit the room. But should we kick off this um, dialogue, Alina? What do you say? Ready to go? Let's roll. Let's do okay. it. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so uh, what we thought of starting with uh, is a little bit of an honest um, dialogue on how, on one hand, innovation managers perceive um, AI and AI technologists and vice versa. So we start to feel whether we have any possibility here to actually build uh, a friendship. So I'll start off, if it's okay with you, Galina, saying a little bit how I see uh, the thing from our side. So I think that when it comes to innovation managers, um, I would say that um, a lot of us now are increasingly interested in this new technology, AI. Uh, and this is also reflected in the fact that we have several thematic groups on AI and innovation management uh, starting up, both at the international community ISPIM, at the Swedish Association of Innovation Managers, And um, So there is curiosity. But unfortunately, in if I'm really honest, I would say that both the level of uh, knowledge and understanding of AI technology is rather low, but also when it comes to practice. So I would say uh, we innovation managers are not so good at using AI uh, tools in our own practice of innovation management. And I would also say that a lot of innovation managers see AI as just another kind of technology uh, you know, that you can use to optimize existing uh, portfolio of products or add new features and services, but maybe I have not thought so much about the possibilities of AI transforming uh, the organization and what and how we do today. But I'm curious, Galina, what would you say, um, you know, how do AI technologists see us uh, innovation managers? Do we have any chance at all to build some sort of collaboration and friendship here? Yeah, I have to, I, I have to say the unfortunate truth is that uh, many AI technologists, and that's a pretty broad group, uh, data scientists and machine learning engineers and uh, some of the related roles, um, I, I think we think the world is our onion and we can peel it all by ourselves. So, so there's a perception, especially by more junior folks, people fresh out of school that, you know, technology is a thing. And if you build it, that's, uh, you know, they will come and they will use it. And uh, there's, um, I would say, maybe it's because the field is kind of immature. There's not sufficient amount of recognition of what difficulties you, you may encounter when you try to integrate it into how people work with this. So, um, so it's a pretty hard one, one realization that if you build it, they will not necessarily come, uh, that your success is not guaranteed, but also that, you know, some of the, especially machine learning based technology requires a lot of changes in order to get going. And I think, um, 
and, and also that you need multiple perspectives to develop this types of technology. So I think uh, I, I think it's more those of us who uh, uh, who've tried it a few times who have really come to the recognition of how important some of this is. And uh, and then the question really becomes from us, from AI technologists to you guys, is where do innovation managers fit in, and what do innovation managers actually do? Because if I'm really honest, I think you know an average data scientist has no idea uh, really what this role actually entails. Yes, let's go into that. But before that, I just wanted to reflect on what we're seeing in the chat. Um, thanks God, we do have both sides with us. We have the AI and innovation side with us, but we even have some UX uh, designers, uh, game developers, and so on. So uh, it's, it's a rather mix of competencies that could be all useful in this journey of AI integration in organizations. So maybe this is also since we started off with sharing a little bit what might be potentially the tensions between um, you know, AI technologists and innovation managers, um, I can uh, say that I suggest we pose the question number two to see what the audience thinks about what might be these potential tensions between the two sides that we have here uh, in the dialogue. So we see if we're completely off or we're onto something, Alina, here. But while uh, we're getting the, the question in the chat, I can start answering your, uh, uh, your question. So I'd say if I'm very honest, you know, what do we do? You know, what do innovation managers do is something that would probably be answered rather differently, uh, depending on what innovation manager you would ask. But since I've been both in the practice and in the research of this, and also have been part of a first group actually here in Sweden that tried to internationally define some sort of certification for the role of innovation manager, and now even have an ISO standard you know, for the innovation management system, I'd say I can give you a little bit of an answer to that. And my perspective would be like that. I think that somebody who is responsible for innovation management uh, would, you know, first uh, we would kind of look at how can we sense what's going on in our environment. So we make sure we're constantly uh, kind of paying attention to changes, to trends, to new technologies, new things happening in society that might be a source of innovation for our organization. So that's the first thing. And of course, innovation never happens in a closed box. So one of the key roles we also have is to build a sort of an ecosystem, you know, with different um, external partners, could be universities, you know, could be startups, could be different types of um, tech companies and so on that can, you know, help help us increase our innovation capability. But then I think we work a lot also with people and organizations. So we think about, okay, what culture, you know, do you need to build? What mindset, what skills, what leadership that would be kind of supportive uh, for new things happening in organization? And also how do we transition from this traditional hierarchical hierarchies towards more participatory, self-organized, agile ways of organizing. And last but not least, obviously, what's traditionally perceived as innovation management is kind of, you know, facilitating innovation processes, having tools for that, running a sort of an innovation portfolio, uh, you know, and then kind of evaluating what's happening with that, what value are we uh, creating. Um, but what would you say, I mean, if we go back to AI technologist role, how does that connect? Is there some sort of overlaps, connections between the two roles? What would you say? How do you see uh, an AI technologist role? The, this is a very interesting question, actually. And, uh, you know, I spent uh, years, so, so say four years ago, I was talking a lot about data science role at the career panel, for example, for women in data science Sweden that we run. And we always talked about data scientists as being a T-shaped role. So it has uh, some shallow skill set at the top and then a deep leg, which includes a lot of skills like creating machine learning models, uh, being able to work with data in certain ways, um, being able to access data at least uh, at the basic level. And then we would always talk about this leg as having a lot of really important, uh, I would say, soft skills on one side. So um, uh, we would always say that communications, uh, communication is a very important skill for data scientists, being able to give presentations 
to the management, being able to, you know, um, you know, talk at the right level to different people and explain their work. While at the same time, on the other side of this T, that would be, you know, data engineering skills, ability in some cases to integrate uh, the work and productionize their model, sometimes integrate directly into some kind of product. And, and I have to say that we stepped back from this a little bit. So I think there is more of a recognition that this is more of a unicorn wish list, uh, which unfortunately over the years, uh, we've seen that this resulted on not a few cases of burnout. And so I think uh, we stepped back a little bit from this, but also some of this, um, some of the skills that we were talking about um, were definitely things that innovation managers talk about a lot that are considered to be part of a part of an innovation process. And mm -hmm. kind of like, because of the nature of stuff, what data scientists or machine learning engineers do, it's new, it's, uh, you know, new types of products and stuff, you know, it requires this type of integration. So, um, so yeah, it's been kind of, um, it's been kind of an interesting thing. At the same time, um, you know, we had these discussions before and so innovation managers like to speak about AI adoption, whereas when somebody mentions to me as a technologist and a former software engineer AI adoption, I think a lot of the times AI development uh, and we tend to ignore the whole other aspect, which is integration of third party AI product uh, products into the processes of uh, your organization. We think it's like, oh, that's not our problem because we're just doing some kind of development, right? Like something is happening over there. So I guess I'm wondering how you think about it between AI adoption, AI development and AI integration. There's all these things that are thrown about. And I would say that I think technologists and managers and innovation managers, I think we have kind of a misunderstanding around this. Yeah, I think this is a good point. I think that in a way, um, both already in the AI development, we would need to bring more voices to the table than we have traditionally today. So that these different competencies such as, you know, innovation management, technological competencies, but then also let's say AI ethics and, you know, more knowledge about business to make sure that, you know, what we're doing with AI creates value in a way for the company. All those competencies need to be in a way part of this discussion already in the early stage of development. But then I think to bring back, uh, you know, this question of how, in a way, I think AI innovation management could contribute to also AI adoption and integration into organization. I think that we are traditionally very good at building bridges because, you know, innovation never happens when you have people with the same background and mindset in the room. So you often, you know, need to bring in different voices and people with different competencies and backgrounds to, uh, to work together to come up with something new. So I think this is kind of a role that innovation management could definitely have in, in you know, AI adoption and integration, even in already in the development, so to speak, um, but I also think that when we move from what you were saying um, of AI development towards kind of also more wider adoption of AI across different functions in organizations. So let's say in HR or in finance or, you know, sort of talking about a wider transformation of a company. I mean, then in a way um, you really need um, this kind of right mindset among people, because now we see so many studies uh, coming out that say, well, the number one problem with AI adoption in organizations is actually people and culture, not necessarily technological challenges. So in a way, there's still a lot of fear in technology, you know, taking away our jobs or uh, mistrust and so on. So I think innovation managers could really help uh, building this kind of more open, curious, experimental mindset that is needed uh, to go towards higher stages of AI maturity. Yes. And, and I think it's very important because I don't think AI technologists have a good notion of people's concern about the impact of this type of tools. I don't think that's something we are very well familiar with. I think we read sometimes the articles, but it doesn't really register with us. So, um, so if I flip it on the other end, I think what we see uh, with integration is that in some cases, organizations are also don't understand our development process and the kind of mindset that's required to successfully develop AI in the organization. So as a typical example, uh, when you create something with data, when you create a machine learning product, you um, 
get some test data and then you work with this data to, to create an initial model and then you kind of try to see if it approximately works and you integrate it into um, um, into the product and you try to launch it and by the time you launch it to be entirely honest a lot of the time it sucks at the beginning and it's by continuous improvements afterwards that um, it gets better because we get more data from the users and more, or more data from somewhere else and these models improve and then they really start to we understand how to make it better like we really start to understand how to have it deliver value but also improve the quality of these models so this notion that it's not a project uh, with the beginning and the end in a lot of cases is something that is new to um, to a lot of business management and in my experience as a director is also a lot of the times it's a cause of why these types of projects uh, they get started and they're dead within 12 to 18 months because they're not integrate, integrated into the bigger strategy but also people don't understand that it's a different process that it's a process of iteration that it's a process that has a high degree of uncertainty and people who work with this they really have to understand and learn to deal with this uh, and it's new in some ways sometimes both to project managers and to back-end engineers uh, to more you know different types of technologists who work with this so i think i feel that um, development of ai actually brings a mindset that contains a lot of parts that innovation management tends to talk about so yes. we need iterative development we need to have kind of ability to deal with uncertainty. We need to work cross-functionally with people because the whole thing touches on absolutely everything inside the company usually. And then it needs to be integrated also into some kind of a customer process. And um, so, so what we find is that by integrating machine learning into something, anything in uh, an organization, you kind of bring the uh, innovation mindset, whereas it's really useful to have innovation mindset in the organization already in order to integrate um, the machine learning. So I'm kind of wondering, um, I guess, how you feel about that? You know, what's your sense of this interplay? Yeah, I think and this is a great opportunity then to actually uh, pose the last question, which is kind of asking the audience, you know, what do they see as the benefits uh, potentially of this collaboration between innovation managers and AI technologists? Um, because I totally agree when we have been having this dialogue, we're actually writing a book chapter on this. So those of you who are interested can, you know, learn more about this later on. Um, we kind of realized, wow, a lot of the principles from AI development that you just described are the same as, you know, principles at work in any innovation process. So this open-endedness, uncertainty, experimentation, iteration, and so on and so forth. So I think that in that sense, we have a lot in common, so to speak. And I think what innovation management can do is bring this um, to all people in organizations, so to speak, as more of a core skill of a way of being at work. And I think if all people would have this capacity, they would be, you know, more open also to experiment with AI tools and be part of development because they would have the right skills to do that. And so I think that's kind of one way. And I think the other benefit I would say of this collaboration is also that I think innovation managers can help uh, move this discussion that has been mainly focused on AI for optimization and automation, which, you know, creates this fear of being replaced, for example, towards more actually, can we innovate with AI? Can we create, you know, new value and can we augment ourselves as, you know, people, as workers in the company with this technology? So we can um, uh, be better at certain tasks where maybe our brains are in a way or, you know, its capacity is, is limited. Uh, you wanted to say something, Alina, go ahead. Yes, and, and reflecting on this, um, so we've done some research um, and we've created something we call AI innovation maturity model. And we looked at the levels, stages of maturity that companies go through. And the first few stages, we call them foundational, experimental and operational. They tend to look at... Uh, uh, integrating AI into the company in a kind of bolt-on fashion. It's usually some kind of a secondary 
uh, thing. It's not on the critical path, but uh, really during the process, uh, technical capabilities are built up. And then you arrive at the stage where if you're a finance company, for example, commonly you have AI credit scoring and AI um, fraud detection by the end of it. And when you operationalize it, you know, the companies really feel like they've achieved success with this and they can get stuck in that place, even though they're really the next few stages, they're transformative that they can go into. So innovation management type of tools, I think would be useful to break them out of uh, sitting on their, um, you know, sitting on the throne of success, essentially, and, um, you know, understand that there's a forest behind the trees and they need to start working on it because so far they've really done kind of a bolt on part. But of course, now they have also the technical capacity and now they need more innovation capacity, if anything, to, you know, like to really work and to go into the next stage. So, um, so they're kind of like, there's an interplay between those two parts. And I think this in the second part, innovation management plays a very essential role. Mm. Yes, I totally agree. And maybe I'm thinking because we've spent a lot of time, uh, me trying to argument how could innovation managers contribute to AI adoption and integration, we could just maybe uh, shortly talk also about how we think in a way AI could augment, you know, innovation managers, because this is also, it, it, it has to be a dialogue if it is a friendship. And I think that in a way also we as innovation managers need to become better at experimenting with, you know, AI tools in our own work. And I think if we were part of AI development, we would better start to understand how it works in a way, how the technology works. So what would you say, what, what's your spontaneously, how do you see, you know, potentially uh, we could use AI to, to become better at what we do? Um. <laughs> That's, of course, a, a long answer that could be done to this question, but I do think it's essential for people to start using the tools, whether it's, um, you know, uh, it, maybe you should pick a particular area that you feel innovation management uh, managers work with. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for example, we talked about something as basic as being able to, um, you know, record interviews and being able to extract um, being able to automatically transcribe it and being able to automatically analyze uh, interviews, something that normally takes a really long time. You know, like when you start integrating, it's a small thing, but you know, when you start integrating actual machine learning tools, even there, if they're kind of like third party into your own work, it, it makes you think differently about what's possible mm. and what can be done and also what works well already and what doesn't work well. And I think it brings uh, innovation managers closer to technologists. And then there could also be a conversation about why these other things don't work well. I think it's the process of this type of action inquiry is important. I think uh, even um, when writing this chapter that we are about to submit in fact, and having this conversation in preparation, I think we really recognize that uh, sometimes we say the same words, but we don't mean the same things. It really requires exploration to understand it better. And this is also my experience from being 15 years in the industry, working with machine learning, because um, we have a lot of words like data and, and AI and something else. And these words are thrown around a lot, but people don't feel comfortable really discussing precisely what they mean, because these things are so obvious. And I think... Um, one thing I would say, it's important to question assumptions and it's important to ask stupid questions. And this is how you can actually arrive at better understanding of all of that stuff. So, um, but I'm, I'm not sure that answers your question, but, uh, you know. Yeah, you it's, like it's, that, long, you it's a long discussion and we have only one minute left. So let's wrap it up here. Um, I actually, we have published last year also an article where we explain quite uh, or give a lot of ideas how actually innovation managers could use AI to augment themselves. So those of you who are interested, I posted my email address. So I'm, you know, just approach me and I will uh, send it to you. And also there was a question previously about certification of innovation managers, you know, include that. I can send you a, a link if you're interested into that. But to wrap it up, uh, maybe we can say we've explored a little bit um, where we are today, 
how we could collaborate, what are the similarities, but also benefits of possible collaboration. So could we in a, in a way conclude that yes, the answer is that we, we can build a nice friendship. What do you say, Galina? I think not only can we, but we should really. And we, will, we can only do it though by having really open, honest conversation about it. And, uh, you know, talking about basic values and basic assumptions, I would say, uh, because um, the only way we successfully integrate AI or innovation uh, or become more innovative is, uh, you know, by exploring this type of, of things. Yes, I totally agree. So I'd like to thank everyone to join us today. Um, it was a pleasure to talk to you, Galina, and let's continue this conversation um, in the future. Yeah, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much. Take care of yourselves.